Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. You know, I'm really fortunate to have such a nice collection of beautiful boas. And today I'm gonna to share with you guys just some of the, my favorite boas that are looking particularly nice right now. And I'm gonna show you some holdbacks from the last five or six years or so. So and these are gonna be my future breeders, so be sure to stay tuned. First, I wanted to say, I know it's been a while since I posted a video. It's not because I've forgotten the channel. Believe me, it's been on my mind a lot, you know, pretty much all the time. Unfortunately, I have a day job that's gotten super, super busy lately, and I've just been really swamped with that. Yes, I, I'm not a professional snake breeder. I have to have a day job so that I can pay for my snake breeding activities. Um, you know, besides the day job, of course, I've got to care for all my snakes. I've got lots of babies that were born this year that I'm getting established. I've got to coordinate the sales and shipping of baby boas to you guys who are interested in acquiring one. And I have my family. So I'm just, you know, it's been just a really hectic last few months. And although I've really wanted to make videos, unfortunately, sometimes I just don't have the time. But I'm hoping that's going to change pretty soon. Um, I'm not stopping making videos the last few weeks because I don't have ideas. I got lots of ideas and often I'll just be doing something not related to snakes and I'll get an idea in my head and I'll write it down. And uh, unfortunately I need to put in some research before making the videos. I can't just go from an idea to a video most of the time. So I have to do some research and really think about it and organize my thoughts. Um, but I have a lot, a lot of really cool topics that I'm going to hopefully make in the not too distant future as far as the future videos. So thank you guys for you know continuing to follow me and those of you who subscribed in the last few weeks, thank you. We're gonna have a lot of new content in the not too distant future. But for today, I thought I would do an impromptu video, just show you guys some of my favorite boas, some of the, uh, the uh, viewer favorites as far as really beautiful boas to look at. Hopefully there's some eye candy here for all of you guys and you'll like some of these boas. But I thought I'd start with this beautiful 2020 Barranquilla Columbia boa, bred by my good buddy, Michael Beach. And this animal is just developing superbly. I mean, I, her colors are just amazing. She's got this beautiful strawberry peach color. Um, this is a 2020. I'd say she's probably about five, maybe a little over five feet now, growing very nicely. And just an amazing boa. I, you know, I don't have to say that out of all the localities, the branchia are probably my number one favorite, even more so than the Argentines and the Peruvian red tails, to be honest. I just love their mellow personality. I love their body shape and their colors and just really, really great boas. A lot of you guys have been asking about, you know, do you have any branchia for sale? No, I unfortunately I won't have any branchia until 2025 at the earliest. So this female is not ready to breed this year. Um, possibly the following breeding season, the 2024 to 2025 breeding season. But I just have to see. So I've got a trio of these, a male and two females. This is one of the females and just really love these animals. I definitely would have gotten them sooner had I known how great they were. But hopefully in the 2024 to 2025 breeding season, I should have a pairing of Barranquilla boas, but great boas, highly recommended, as are really all Colombian boas, but you just can't be a Barranquilla Colombia locality boa. Next, we have a true red tail from Suriname. This is a holdback that was born here in 2017. This is a female from my famous male Prometheus' second litter and she's really a beautiful breathtaking animal so this female is she's probably about five feet long she's been a really slow grower because she's now six years old um, not quite ready to breed even at six years old actually i have her sister who's a little bit bigger who i'm planning on pairing up next year but i'm not planning on pairing up this girl until 2024 at the earliest and she just has this beautiful glow this uh I don't know if it comes through on the camera, but she's got this beautiful pinkish rose, you know, sides. Um, another thing I like about this boa is her saddle shape. It's really definitely different. If you, uh, if you can see, she's got kind of aberrant, slightly peaked saddles, but they've got this like circle in the middle. You can see there's a little dot of the background color that doesn't have the dark uh, pigment. And she's got this, uh, 
you know, for her first seven or eight saddles there. If, and what's cool about this, I haven't seen this in Surinams other than this animal. I've seen it a lot in Venezuelan true red tails, but for some reason it just popped up in this one. Not, and then, you know, it didn't pop up in any of the others in the litter, which was kind of interesting, but this one got it. So really cool, interesting look. I always like the animals that look a little bit different, you know, and kind of stand out. But this is a beautiful Prometheus bloodline Suriname red tail. And uh, maybe in 2024, 2025, she might be producing some babies. Next, we have a dwarf boa holdback. This is a crawl key boa born here in 2020. This is a male that I held back, and he's doing quite well. I would say he's about a little over three feet long now. And this guy has uh, kind of the cool look to him. You can see he's got some striping on his tail. You know, saddles are pretty typical for a crawl key boa. They're, you know, a little bit aberrant, a little bit of a jungly look. He's got the nice light gray coloration with the darker gray saddles. And uh, I actually had a litter of these just uh, about a month or so ago. And the babies are doing real well so far. They're all feeding and I'm getting them established and they'll be ready for sale in the next uh, probably week or two as soon as I can get the uh, pictures taken and uploaded to my Flickr site. But this will show you, this is guy is now three years old and you can see how small he is. And he's actually not that far away from breeding size. You know, probably put on another foot or so and he'll be ready to breed. I would say probably not next year, maybe next year. Um, I have to think about the lineup. I might pair him up with one of my older females. Um, if not next year, possibly the uh, 2025 breeding season. I gotta think about the year uh, that it is. But the, the season starting in 2025. But maybe the season starting in 2024, so a year from now. But really cool dwarf locality boa, the Kualki boa from a small island off the coast of Belize. Perfect if you want a boa that doesn't take up a lot of space. Next, another Suriname red tail holdback. This guy's from 2021. This is the animal I call Pink Floyd because of his beautiful pink colors. And this guy is from the Prometheus bloodline. He's doing really well. Um, you can see the high contrast and the, the long red tail. And this guy seemed to have more pink coloration than his litter mates, which is why I held him back. Um, he's doing real well. I'd say he's about three feet. This is a two-year-old animal. So I, you know, some of you guys who bought my Surinams lately, a few people have asked about, well, they seem a little small. I was expecting a bigger boa. These guys go really slowly for the first few years. And I have some nice 2022 animals. I've got about 10 left from the 2022 season. These guys are now a year old. They're maybe about two, two and a half feet long. They're not huge animals. Um, but these are great animals to, to look at if you're looking for a boa that's maybe got a little bit more size to it than a baby. It's gonna be a year closer to breeding and it also is gonna be a little bit less fragile than the newborn animals. You know, the newborn babies sometimes have issues with regurgitation if you're not really careful, but these one-year-old animals um, have gone past that stage. And you can see them at my Flickr page with the at the link below the video description if you're interested. Anyway, this is a two-year-old animal though. And this guy shows you he's not, he's no giant, he's about three feet long. This guy's gonna probably put on another two feet or so over the next two years and then he'll be breeding size and he might get up to six, maybe even six and a half, seven feet. But that's about it, these guys are not giants. And I know from this bloodline, they, do, they just don't get all that big. So not a giant animal. Um, but, you know, beautiful looking animal. I'm trying to breed for really nice, beautiful, colorful, high contrast animals, which is why I held this guy back and looking forward to getting him into the breeding lineup in, you know, maybe three years from now. Here's another holdback true red tail. This guy is actually a Copa Peruvian born here in 2020. He's a year older than the Suriname I just showed you. So you can see he's uh, quite a bit bigger. I'd say he's maybe four, maybe a little bit bigger four and a half feet. The Peruvians in general do grow faster in my experience. And maybe they, they get a little bit bigger as far as the bloodlines I have, but overall they're not all that much bigger as adults, maybe seven to eight feet tops. But this is a male that I held back from my 2020 litter. He's doing real well. 
So he's, you can see he's got that beautiful golden yellow coloration. And it does get better as they get bigger, but this guy has been pretty colorful from the start. I, you know, my Peruvians, they're pretty yellowish even when they're first born. You know, sometimes they're more more gray when they're born, the, the true red tails, but these guys, uh, they just uh, look quite nice and yellow and golden. And uh, really muscular, his, mu his muscles are starting to develop. These guys will get that really classic, you know, uh, square shaped body as they hit, you know, three to four years of age. And then the adults are really blocky and muscular and just a really impressive boa for someone that wants a uh, really impressive animal to take out and show your friends or, you know, having a beautiful display vivarium, something like that. But uh, you can't beat these. These guys are many boa keepers' favorite locality, the Peruvians. And uh, to many people, these are the epitome of the true red tail. And look for, you're looking forward to getting this guy in the breeding lineup a few years down the road. Thought I'd mix it up and show you guys a morph boa. And this is actually an animal that I'm planning on pairing up in the upcoming 2023 to 2024 breeding season. This is a call junglo boa. This animal has the call albino as well as the hypo and the jungle. And you can see just the amazing colors of this animal. As you might know, many of the calls albinos kind of get washed out, this really pale yellow look when they get to be full size. But you can see this female who's also got the hypo in the jungle just really shows the beauty of this color combination and how intense the colors are. You can see she's a pretty good size uh, animal. I'd say probably pushing about seven feet. This is a 2018 born animal produced by Peter Messry. And I'm probably gonna pair her up with, uh, I have a call jungle male that I'm probably gonna pair her up with. Um, for the 2023 to 24 breeding season. So in just a, a couple months she'll be paired up, but uh, just doing real well. I also like how mellow this female is. And I just love the look of her head. You can see the beautiful colors on her head. Just, you know, almost incandescent. This animal glows with color. And I, you know, I know morphs aren't for everybody, but if you're into the morphs, the call morphs are definitely a classic that you should really think about getting. And you just can't beat the look of a call jungle like this one. Here's another 2018 born animal that I'm planning on pairing up for her first time this upcoming breeding season. This is a 2018 born Tarahumara mountain boa born here. If you've tuned into my channel for any length of time, you've probably seen me hype up these Tarahumara mountain boas. And I think they're one of the greatest locality boas they're arguably the smallest locality boa, maxing out at about four and a half feet in length. So this female isn't gonna get any bigger than this. She is now five, a little over five years old. But they're just such great animals, not just for the small size, but they've got this beautiful intricate pattern and lots of subtle pink and even blue and green colors to them. And they're really chill, really enjoyable to handle. Definitely a cool boa. And you know, I always like getting these guys out when my friends come over that think boas are giants. And I show them these little Tarahumara boas and they're, they're always really impressed because these are certainly no bigger than a ball python or corn snake or any other medium sized snake. So if you think boas are too big for you, check, in, check out some of these dwarf boas. But I'm hoping for some babies in 2024. Unfortunately, I didn't produce any babies this year. And these guys have just become super popular lately. And there's a very limited supply because unfortunately, very few people are working with them. Uh, I get a lot of requests for people wanting these. Uh, you know, if I could just snap my fingers and clone like a million of them, they would probably sell in just a few weeks. But unfortunately, I can't do that. I have to breed them like everyone else. And uh, they don't have very big litters. I think in 2022, I produced two litters but it was only like a dozen babies. So there's just not too many of them around. They don't have a very high reproductive capacity. Anyway, the Tarahumara boa, great dwarf boa, definitely one to check out if you're looking for something on the small side. From the smallest locality to one of the largest, this is an Argentine boa, and this is a female that I got uh, just a few years ago. She's actually a 2019 born animal, and she's uh, just quite a, big boa. 
Uh, I'd say she's probably about seven feet now. She's really thick and muscular. So I think this girl has the potential to get uh, pretty big. Probably, you know, maybe even one of my biggest boas ever. I had a pair of Argentines that uh, max out about eight and a half to nine feet. So I think this girl could get up to that size. And uh, she's now eating extra large rats. I might move her up to even bigger rats. She's just really a you know a brick house of a boa. Just really solid, really muscular. She's just grown faster than my other boas, even my other Argentine boas. There's of course going to be some variability in how fast boas grow and how big they get, even for the same type of boa. And this girl is just on the uh, right side of the bell curve. And uh, I not going to breed her this year. Just want to give her some more time. Maybe get a little, you know, put on another foot or so. Possibly in 2024 to 2025, this one will breed. But we'll just have to see. I finally produced some Argentines in 2023. Was really happy about that. Uh, not related to this one. But, you know, it had been a few years of trying. And I finally got another litter of Argentines. So hopefully in 2024 or 2025, I'll have more babies possibly from this girl, but we'll just have to see. But definitely an impressive looking boa, this uh, big female Argentine boa. Thought I'd grab another Argentine. If you're like me, you probably can't get enough of these Argentines. This is my Max Pink Bloodline male. This guy was born in 2018, so he's uh, actually a year older than the female I just showed you. And you can see the Max Pink overall is lighter in color, kind of more whites on the side and they retain these magenta blotches in between the saddles up to adulthood. Most of the Argentines will have these blotches as babies, but they usually fade by about a year old. But this particular bud line developed by Bob Guerriere shows these magenta blotches into adulthood. So kind of a cool type of boa, the Max Pink Argentine boa. And so this guy just fired his first litter that was born a few months ago. His babies are gonna be ready to go and probably Another week or two, I'll have them on my, my Flickr site. Uh, so I bred this Max Pink bloodline to a black and white female, similar to the female I showed you in the previous scene. And I've been getting a lot of questions about, well, what are, the, what are they going to look like as adults? Because you have the Max Pink and you have the regular. And I actually asked Bob Guerriere this question on, uh, on Facebook. And what he said is that he's not exactly sure. He thinks probably it'll be intermediate in phenotype. So they'll retain some of the pink colors, or magenta colors rather. Maybe not quite as much as the full-blooded Max Pink. But then, they, you know, there could be variability. Some of them could be just as pink as this guy. Some of them could not retain the pink at all. They could look like a regular black and white wild-type boa. Just, uh, you know, who knows. Or there could even be some kind of a unexpected phenotype. You know, I mean, you never know. So really nice Argentine boas are, that are going to be ready. And um, you know, another thing with the Max Pink, you can see how he's quite a bit lighter in color than that female. He's kind of more of a caramelly brown than a black and white, but uh, retaining that magenta uh, in the saddles. And uh, I love these Argentines. They're you know, one of my favorites. Definitely a very popular locality boa. And the Max Pink adds some nice variety uh, into you know, an Argentine boa collection. One more boa for today's video. This is a Hog Island boa. This guy is a male born here in 2018 or 2019 rather. This is from Sears Bloodline with a cross to a bloodline that I got from Ron Greenberg. And I really like the babies from this litter. They just have this beautiful, uh, lots of color. This is really beautiful look. I have some pure Sears Bloodline babies that were born the previous year that I'm growing up as well. I like these guys a little better though. They're a little bit darker in color and they have kind of more of the background markings, but they also have this really intense coloration, lots of pinks and oranges and some blues and greens. You know, probably one of the most colorful locality boas, probably even close to the true red tails, to be honest, in terms of the, the color. And, you know, I find that this is especially true with this particular litter. The ones that I have that are the pure Sears bloodline, those are beautiful as well, but they're a little bit more washed out, not quite as colorful. Um, but these guys are doing real well. So um, this guy, probably he's ready to breed now. I'm not sure if he's going to be paired up in 2023 to 2024. 
I will have some pairings of hogs though, so hoping to get some babies. I had a litter this year, it was very, very small. In fact, just one baby. And it, the baby sold super quick. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I can, you know, like I said before, I can't clone boas, I have to breed them. And, you know, breeding is never guaranteed. And, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out as well as you hope. You don't get very many babies. These are, this is another animal like the Terra Humara. You know, going back, you know, five or 10 years, but well, more like 10 or 15 years, these guys seemed to be everywhere and they were selling for dirt cheap. And then the supply just dried up a few years ago and now you just can't get them anymore. And the, you know, the prices have gone way, way up. But hopefully more people will be working with these and they'll be more widely available because they're just such uh, great rewarding animals to work with. Definitely one of my favorite localities and hoping to have some more babies in 2024. So be sure to stay tuned, you know. With that uh, in mind, I, I might as well say that I'm thinking about my 2023 to 2024 breeding pairs now. I have a pretty good idea of what I'm gonna pair up. It's not quite finalized, but I'll probably be, be sharing that with you in a future video in the next couple months about my breeding plans. And as I mentioned, I have a lot of ideas for different videos about really cool, captivating topics that you've come to expect from the Brian Boas channel. So be sure to stay tuned and I'll get those videos out to you as soon as I can get them from my brain to the camera. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, shoot me any questions or comments you have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boss.